Welcome back to the outpost. I'm certainly glad that you had time to stop by. Um, before I get started today, I just wanted to say that this might be a little bit different video than what you're used to. I know that I do um, or have been trying to do some questions and answers, but I think that there's a lot of questions in people's minds today concerning this current crisis that uh, we're experiencing worldwide. And as I go through doing some things today, I wanted to kind of address that so I don't mean to um, talk a whole lot but I got some things on my mind that I think are very important and I would like to share with you all and some steps that I think would be of interest to you as far as this coronavirus this epidemic that we're um, um, in the middle of right now and how you can take some steps to keep yourself and your family safe so follow along with me um, and if it's not interesting to you I, I understand because I'll be talking more than normal but uh, if you want to follow along uh, you know, I'll share with you what's on my heart, and I hope that it helps you in some way. Well, I know that you've probably seen these before leaning up here because they've been here for quite some time. This was the tree that I was cutting that I was going to mill up for some of the timbers. And when I went to try to pick it up, it actually had split some. So instead of it um, using it for one of the beams, I just took the tractor and I finished splitting it and I saved these two pieces right here. I'm going to take this bark off uh, because I want to make some saw horses out of it. Now I am going to take it in there on the mill because it was broken and it's jagged um, and I'm going to smooth that out but I'm going to do the rest of it with hand tools just like you would do in the old days. Um, I'm going to take my bracing bit. I'm going to drill some holes in here for some legs and we're going to debark this and I'm going to use these for saw horses on uh, the cabin over there because I'll need to support things up in the air when I'm working. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put my gloves on, see if we can't take this bark off. And then when we do, I'll take the draw knife and clean it up a little bit. And then we'll take it in there and put it on the sawmill. And we'll see if we can't smooth uh, the tops of this off. the question you know what were my timbers made out of and I know I've answered this before but for those of you that may be new tuning in um, this is poplar um, has a very thick bark on the outside it's a considered a hardwood 
This is the tulip poplar and it's very easy to work with. It also um, appears to be a better structural wood than actually the yellow pine on some of the research that I've done. But anyway, the outer bark, I'm trying to get rid of that down to the uh, denser material so that it doesn't uh, rot as easy. To answer that question, um, most of what I have built so far is out of the poplar. My siding will be out of yellow pine because that is also abundant here. And um, so I've got some logs laying right over there. There are yellow pine. Um, this is where the fat wood comes from. And if you can see these logs right here, see all of that pine sap from about here out. It was solid red. It's starting to bleed a little bit now. I say bleed. The sap is starting to come out. And the same thing here, the same thing here. You can see uh, these red lines here. That is the fat wood. These were very solid on the outside with them. But uh, that stuff right there, it's really good for fire starter. said I'm going to take that put it on the sawmill and plane this off where it's uh, somewhat level before I put legs on it. I do have two of these cut out. I've got a nice smooth side to work on. 
Um, this was the only modern tool that I'm going to use. The rest of it's going to be done with hand tools. This will make two nice um, saw horses that I can actually use over there. Then when I'm done building the cabin, or I may take them down there to the bush camp. We'll see when I start working on that, because uh, I do have a pair of saw horses up here, but I had specifically brought these up out of the woods in order to make this out of. My son and I, we greatly appreciate all the support the channel is getting. It's growing. Also, you can go down. Uh, now you will find listed um, uh, access to our store where we've got uh, branded t-shirts, cups, and hoodies and things like that. We've got um, ball caps and different things. We're going to continually add to that so that um, there is several options available. That's one way that you can help support the channel if you like what you're seeing and uh, it helps us to be able to do a lot of different things. Um, also, you know, if you've got some ideas of things that you would like for us to brand, be sure and put those in the comment sections as well. Uh, also, don't forget about our giveaways. Uh, we have those on a monthly basis. Make sure to watch for the video at the first of the month um, because that's where you need to make your comment on that video. So I'll come back up here uh, tomorrow and I will try to finish these uh, saw horses up and hopefully we can get some legs on them and be able to put them in operation. Hey everyone, welcome back to the outpost. Glad that you had time to stop by up here. Um, today is actually a GoPro day because I forgot and left the main camera at home. Yeah, I could have beat myself up when I got out of the truck a while ago and went to grab the camera and it wasn't there. So, anyway, I did have my GoPro with me, thank goodness. Uh, but it's raining again today, so I think what I'm going to do is try to finish up these... Um, saw horses that I started yesterday. I have a Forstner bit which I'm going to use to drill the holes with. I actually put it down here on the sawmill and I clamped it down so that it wouldn't move while I am drilling these holes. Uh, but we're going to try to put some legs on it today. Anyway, I've got the fire going as you can see and I'm going to cook some breakfast. I've uh, got some eggs and bacon with me and some apples and oranges. Um, I'm going to go and look for some material that I can make the legs out of before I actually drill these holes. So let's take off to the woods and see if we can find some material to make the legs on these saw horses with. I remember some cedar trees that were blown down up in here. Yeah, here's one right here. The legs would be quite bulky. I don't know if you can see the size of that or not. It's probably four inches. Um, but that's what we want, something nice and sturdy. But I'm going to cut off back probably right in there and then probably up right around 
in there somewhere. We'll take that down there. That'll make a couple of legs than I need. I've got some others that are blown down, so that's what we'll work on. got one here this will make a couple of legs here's one right here if you can see that tree right there I'm gonna try to take that one down check out that cedar it's got a big red heart to it. Yeah, that'll make two or three legs right there. So let me put the camera down, get it hauled up there. Well, you can see that I managed to come up with some cedar posts that had blown down. So I'm going to, there's a, they're a bit large. I'm gonna start at the top down there, work my way down. But uh, the heavier duty it is, because I don't plan on moving them around a lot. Uh, the better off it would be. Then back over here in the corner, I got Candace making breakfast. So, let's see. How are we doing on the bacon? We're just getting started. Uh, bacon's looking good. Let me see. Let me check this fire. Okay, we got a good fire going. As soon as that water heats up, we can have some hot chocolate, right? Okay, let's get some of these limbs knocked off and uh, we will see if we can get some legs made for at least one of these. something about the um, worldwide crisis that we're all experiencing right now um, it's nothing to be taken lightly and you know those people that have respiratory issues uh, such as COPD which includes asthma bronchitis emphysema um, some sort of other type of lung disease uh, cystic fibrosis things like that. They need to take stuff like this very serious as well as any other kind of uh, flu pneumonia type uh, issue. It's my understanding that this COVID actually leads to um, uh, pneumonia. So, um, you know, pneumonia is very serious. Last year in 2019, 68,000 people died in the U.S. Um, but like I say, primarily they had existing chronic conditions that led them into um, something that was uh, very serious, which ended up causing their death. So it's nothing to be taken lightly. You know, there are certain precautions that uh, we can take that are standard and that are common sense things that we use out in the field as well as inside the hospital. Now, if you're just tuning in for the first time, uh, or those of you that have watched any of my videos, you know that I am a paramedic. I work out in the field, and you know I see the worst of everything that happens, whether it's an MDA, cardiac arrest, um, construction workers falling from two or three stories high. You know whatever the issue is, we see it uh, firsthand. So these people with uh, the coronavirus, you know, we have to go and we have to pick them up when they call 911, and we have precautions that we take. Uh, steps that we use uh, out there in the field in the event that um, the dispatcher is notified that these patients that are A, running a fever, B, have difficulty breathing, and C, experiencing flu-like symptoms 
uh, whether fatigue, possibly nausea, things like that. Now, I know that it does start in the throat and it works its way down into the lungs, but I've got some information that I want to share with you here in just a second that are common steps that you can take and use to help, um, it won't prevent, but that you can use to help uh, safeguard yourself and your family. You know, I just wanted to say that the media, they're very good at uh, scare tactics and causing uh, fear in people, and I think that uh, this COVID virus is one of those examples because, like I said, you know, pneumonia is a big, big killer, and that's what this is leading up to. Also, any other issues, you know, we had the uh, swine flu H1N1, um, we've had other viruses that have come through that, you know, didn't get all the attention, but um, like I say, I'm not playing this down. I just think that, um, you know, this has caused mass hysteria. I mean, take a look at it in the stores. <laughs> you know, I don't know how this involves toilet paper, but, um, you know, there's not any toilet paper to be found. Just recently, that you know, they started limiting people to how much that they could purchase, which is probably what they should have did to begin with. But I only go shopping, you know, once every three to four weeks. And I went the other day to, to stock up. And I was surprised at um, what has happened at the stores because, you know, there was no beef. There was no pork. There was no chicken. There wasn't very much fish left. There wasn't any beans. There wasn't any rice. There wasn't, you know, I don't understand the rationale behind a lot of this. But, you know... I'm not making fun, I'm, I guess what I'm trying to say is we need to stop and think about what we're doing. Just like when it snows here, it's a long time tradition, people will run and they'll get bread and milk and they'll just buy it all up and there won't be any left, knowing that the snow is only going to last two or three days and it'll melt and it's gone, um, but it's just a habit that people get into and then the next thing you know, uh, all that milk that you bought spoils or the bread has molded so you know I'm, I'm hoping that everything that these people purchased you know they'll be able to use before it goes bad another thing we take need to take into consideration is elderly people um, you know they can't get out and move as quick as we do so once the weather gets uh, better where they can actually get out and go get the things that they need there's nothing left for them you know and they have uh, metabolisms where they may have to eat stuff that is easier for them to digest but there's nothing available because everybody has taken everything and or um, you know paper goods and things like that that they may need but there, there's nothing available anymore you know honestly everyone we were doing fine the way that things were going even with the the 68,000 deaths with pneumonia and all kinds of respiratory diseases that are related you know, if you got sick and you need to something, you just send a family member to the store to um, help you replenish that, you know. But everybody, like I say, due to the media, I think there's been mass hysteria. And, you know, I don't know the rationale behind all of this, but um, if we could just go back to the way that we were doing, I think everything would uh, kind of smooth out and be okay. But, I mean, they're calling out the National Guard now because people have just went crazy. You know, and we have faced all different kinds of things. I face them every day. And, um, you know, I really don't see how this is honestly any worse than anything else that we have faced on a day-to-day -day basis. But we need, to, we need to think about our actions, how they affect us, our future, as well as our neighbor. How is my actions affecting my neighbor? And so if we care about our, our um, neighbors and our fellow countrymen, then we need to think about what we're doing. You know, when I get a call and I have to go to a scene, I have to remain calm. Uh, otherwise, you know, things can go even wrong for me on the scene. But I have to be concerned about my safety, the patient's safety, and the safety of bystanders if they're there, and everything that's going on. Because my number one priority when I'm called is the health of the patient but also if it's a bad scene it could be the health of somebody else that might be affected so we need to um, remain calm think straight and uh, think about our actions i guess that's what i'm trying to say is what are we doing that's going to affect our our neighbors and our fellow countrymen 
the National Guard's being called out because there's just this total chaos. Um, and I think that, honestly, the, the media and the Internet has uh, caused a great stir among the people. Maybe some of it unintentionally, but I think that, you know, people, um, they've not really gone overboard on this one and compared to what we face every day. So, you know, I just wanted, like I said, I had something that I wanted to share with you and stop and read this. Um, so it says that after several autopsies performed that the Chinese, uh, they're helping to understand that the coronavirus produces a thick mucus that solidifies and blocks the airway passages and the lungs, that the airways must be cleared for treatment and take to take effect, which can take up to several days. You know, that's uh, the similar uh, or the same type of symptom to bronchitis. It has uh, mucus buildup, a big thick blebs that actually get stuck and trapped in the airway, which causes a restriction of airflow uh, inside the lungs. And people constantly are coughing that up. And generally those people will have Kleenexes laying around everywhere because they're constantly coughing and hacking that stuff up. Um, and then, like I said, you know, it changes and leads into pneumonia. So um, pneumonia is very serious because, you know, that's um, a lot of times that is a buildup of this stuff in the lungs, which uh, causes the passage of uh, air, mainly being gases and CO2 from being able to be transferred in the body and out of the body. So I did want to maybe provide you with uh, some sort of hope that there were many, many, many uh, cases of people that had this coronavirus and are no longer affected by it. And I'll read you some of those statistics shortly. But um, some steps that you can take and use that are just common sense things. Uh, drink lots of hot liquids like coffee, tea, soups. Uh, take a sip of warm water every 20 minutes. This keeps the mouth moist and washes any of the virus from the mouth into the stomach where the gastric juices can neutralize the virus. Now gastric juices are hydrochloric acid. If you've ever burped any of that up, you've gotten that taste, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but that, that's what they're saying there, that if you constantly are washing it down, that um, the juices, uh, the gastric juices can actually take care and neutralize it and then you're going to pass it through the body. Another one says gargle with antiseptic rinse uh, with salt, vinegar, or lemon daily. Uh, the virus attaches itself to hair and clothing so when you return home don't just sit down, you know, take your clothes off, put them in the machine, wash them with something, some type of detergent that actually kills viruses and then you're good to go there. If you're unable to wash your clothes daily, hang them out on the clothesline because direct sunlight neutralizes the virus. I was read somewhere else where uh, temperatures above 80 degrees neutralize it because it doesn't like heat. So wash metallic surfaces carefully. The virus can live up to nine days on these surfaces so avoid touching door handles and handrails which is basically the same way that people get the common cold touching something that somebody else who was infected with it has touched and then they pick it up they touch one of their mucous membranes and you know then they began to get symptoms. So be careful of that. Wash your hands for 20 seconds, about every 20 minutes with any soap that foams and wash them thoroughly. Boost your zinc levels, not just vitamin C, by eating fruits and vegetables. That will help to keep you healthier. Animals also do not spread the virus. Humans, uh, it's, that's transferred, transmitted person to person. Try to avoid the common flu because it does weaken, weaken your immune system. And like I said earlier, primarily those of you who have chronic respiratory issues, you need to be the most careful. If you feel a sore throat coming on, attack it immediately with gargling with some sort of antiseptic, salt, vinegar, or lemon. And the virus, because the virus enters the body this way and stays in the throat for three or four days before it passes on to the lungs. Oh, something else that we have run into in the healthcare field, um, and don't ask me why anyone would do it, but do not drink bleach. Why someone thinks that they can drink that and get away with it, I don't know, but bleach is something that you should not ingest. So do not use bleach. These are just some common sense steps that you can take that uh, you can help to um, keep yourself uh, from this 
uh, particular virus, but those of you, like I said, who have chronic respiratory diseases, be extra careful. Um, another thing, I had some statistics I had just Googled one day, and this is what I had come up with. Now, these are a couple of days old. But at the time, um, this was last Thursday, there were 140,651 currently infected patients at the time. Now, with that number said right there, uh, 133,000 of them were mild conditions. 7,178 were serious or critical. And that uh, the cases which had an outcome were 96,510. Being those who were recovered and discharged were 86,675. And then the other 9,800 of them were deaths. So, like I said, people with bad respiratory issues, you know, this can cause a, a major thing with them. But people that have generally good immune systems and um, take care of themselves well, you know, this, like I said, just like any other, and I'm trying to provide some um, inspiration and hope that you know this too will pass and uh, there were 86,000 people out of 96,000 who were discharged and had a favorable outcome so you know if we continue to listen to the media they're only going to report the negative and the reason that I wanted to have a little talk today was primarily to try to bring you some positive uh, I know that these numbers have changed uh, both in both cases, more positive and more deaths as well. But, um, you know, like I said, we had 68,000 deaths due to pneumonia, which is my understanding is what this leads to. And so if we just kind of take some steps to help um, protect ourselves, then, like I said, I think this too will pass. So uh, sorry for not, not having the main camera here because this is a GoPro day, but. Um, Anyway, I'm glad that I had the GoPro with me so that we could have this little talk and maybe I can get some legs on this one horse right here. So um, let me go check on breakfast and uh, we'll get back at it. More and more what I'm doing up here, being self-reliant and being able to do things uh, on my own and not really requiring someone else to do it. Now I do use... Uh, some things up here that are power related. I've got a generator, I've got a tractor, you know, and some other pieces of equipment that use fuel. Well, certainly I don't make my own fuel. Uh, but, you know, I've also got hand tools you've seen me use. I'm using them today. You know, if I had to go back to the old ways, I certainly could do that. It just makes me uh, think about more and more the things that we're doing and uh, things that are happening, you know, I appreciate the fact that you're watching this and hopefully you're learning something, but I also watch others, other channels, and um, you know, I learn a lot from that. And being able to be self-reliant and have skills that you can use to do things, uh, I think is important uh, in the event that something, some major disaster did happen, you know, because we've certainly had them in this country before. It's been a long time since. Uh, we're going through something now that's like I said, shouldn't be taken lightly, but even other countries, you know, uh, have had a lot of major setbacks, and you can see that in the news um, over the last 10 or 20 years, you know, what if we were like that? So, the fact that you're watching um, and hopefully learning something that maybe you could use in the event that something like that happens, um, you know, and anything else that you can watch uh, be able to learn skills, be self-reliant, I think is important. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get back to uh, working on these legs right here. Breakfast is almost done. Um, I decided I'm going to make these legs 32 inches high. That should get that force up around 36 inches, which I think would be a good comfortable level for me to work on. So that's what I am fixing to do. Make 
four legs uh, for this course. And then I've got some, the other ends I carried out there to make the other legs with. But uh, this will be enough to do this one.
Well, folks, there we go. Um, I'm going to have to cut these legs off so that it's, they're level. But uh, that is pretty much a set of uh, horses here. Now what I'm going to do is I will drill some more holes and put some pegs in here. That way I can actually hold some stuff and uh, be able to push against it where it won't go anywhere. And I can also use it to lay logs in. It will hold the log where I can saw them off. But anyway, not too bad. I do apologize, I lost power on my GoPro. Uh, so I'm filming this with my iPhone and hopefully it doesn't look too bad on the screen. I know that this video right here is a Wednesday video for the question and answer um, and the contractor's corner that I have started. I received a lot of good input from that last video. So one of the comments or questions was about the roof being able to breathe. Well, there's not going to be any attic up there. It's going to be tongue and groove on the bottom of the two by sixes. Then it will be six inches of insulation. Then I've got my CDX or OSB plywood uh, as a barrier. Then I've got the felt on top of that uh, along with the metal on top of that. So uh, there's not going to be any breathing going on there. It's just going to be a solid roof and uh, therefore I don't need that. Um, another question that uh, I had asked personally was what type of material or uh, compound uh, should I use in order to treat those posts and a lot of people said linseed oil, some said tongue oil, but I actually found something that was um, today when I was at Lowe's, it uh, comes from Australia, it's a combination of linseed oil and tongue oil um, and when I checked on the price it's about two hundred and I don't know twelve dollars for five gallons so it's like right at uh, a little over fifty dollars a gallon but I think that I can get I think five gallons will do it we'll see maybe just be the first coat but um, I'm gonna wait till it dries up just a little bit because it's just this is the third month of rain with very few weeks uh, of sunshine um, but I think I'm going to wait until it kind of dries up a little bit in order to uh, put some of that on. Then I think what I'm going to do is just take some black plastic after I get that done. I need to wash the logs off because uh, they got red clay on them. But uh, once I get them um, treated, I'm going to take uh, black plastic three foot and go all the way around and just leave that as a barrier to protect uh, the post. When it does rain, you know, it comes down, hits the red clay and it splashes backwards and I just don't want to get the post all nasty um, and you know since the house is open it'll still be able to breathe yeah I think I'll do that so that I don't have to constantly wash those off that was a very good uh, some good answers that I got back from them and uh, I also had some comments about the rafters only being two by sixes and uh, was I considering the snow load well let me just say this I know that sometimes when people make comments, it's based on the code in the area that they live or the norm uh, where they live. Here in the south, we may get one inch. If it snows six inches, that's a bunch, but generally it's like an inch and it stays a day and it's gone. Uh, you've seen the snow on a recent video that I had, the next day it was gone. So as far as it carrying a snow load, it doesn't need to. Every once in a while we do get a freak snow um, but let me just say this, with that purlin set in place there, the span of that two by six is only about six feet. So with two by sixes every 24 inches, I could carry two feet of snow up there with no problem. So I'm not worried in any about that. The most it's gonna to have to hold up is rain because we certainly get a whole lot of it. I just wanted to address that. Anyway, I want to uh, go ahead and close this down. It's still raining. It's getting late. I've got to get ready for work tomorrow. But I do appreciate everybody tuning in. Thank you so much for your support. Um, please don't forget about our giveaways. And, uh, you know, we look forward to seeing you back up here at the Outpost in the future. Everyone take care.